Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Just got off work and I'm on my way back home because I found out that my lift kit I ordered came. I ordered a lift kit for the this truck, the 2020 Chevrolet Silverado, about a week or so ago and it finally came today. And we are going to at least start on it. I kind of doubt I'll get it done before I need to uh, go to sleep to wake back up in the morning. So uh, it came and we're gonna start on it. And we'll uh, look at the truck, how it's sitting now, what is in the kit, and uh, what hopefully this uh, truck's gonna look like when we get done. All right, so this is the lift kit. It's busted open already from our wonderful uh, postal service. So hopefully, there's nothing missing in here. All right, let's see what we got. You know what? Uh, before we get into this, hold on, let's, let's talk about what I ordered. I can get my tape out of here and how the truck sits now and what hopefully it will be when we get done with this. So there is a little bit of rake on this truck. Not a lot. I think right after I got it, I checked it and it was uh, right at an inch, I think. So that's just shy of eight inches. This one shy of seven. It's like seven and three quarters, or six and three quarters. Real close. So it's right at an inch. Okay, so we've got an inch of rate. I had been wanting a lift kit, but I didn't want to go crazy with the lift kit. Like maybe a six inch or bigger. I didn't think I wanted to do that, at least not right now. So I wanted to get a smaller kit, but a little bit of lift, so it would still look good sitting on this size wheel and tire because I don't know when I'll get different wheels and tires because they're so expensive. I think uh, a round of what I want as far as wheels and tires go, I'm looking at about 2,000 for wheels and probably close to somewhere uh, in $1,200 range for tires, so that's 3,500 pushing it and that's a lot of money so i don't know when it'll happen if it'll happen i'm sure one day it'll happen but i don't know when so i wanted to get a lift kit that would lift this thing up at least a little bit and still look good here and look good whenever i get wheels and tires for these so i won't talk too much about the wheels and tires if i ever get them i'll show them off so what I got is I went with a three and a half inch lift kit. Now, all the other lift kits I saw, like full suspension lift kit are like a thousand plus. Some get almost up to 2000. I found this one three and a half inch lift kit that was 300 bucks. It was really hot out here. Yeah, so I found a three and a half inch lift kit for $300. Uh, I have really liked getting uh, my stuff as far as truck stuff goes from realtruck.com. I did get this kit from them. Uh, I can't remember the name brand of the lift kit that I got, but I did get, uh, get it from realtruck.com. And what it is, it's a three and a half inch lift kit. So it's supposed to raise the front up three and a half inches. And then it came with a three inch rear block. So it's going to lift the front end half an inch should be anyways higher than the back so if that's the case it's gonna have a little bit of lift on it and do away with at least some of the rake so I think that's great so what it should have is a rear block uh, I think new u-bolts uh, and a strut spacer on the top the round piece that goes on the top of the spacer and with Chevy they're different than Ford on the bottom of the strut it's two bolts on the control arm like this so you can put another spacer under that whereas Ford on the bottom of their strut at least when I had my 2010 
uh, the bottom of that strut is just a circle on the bottom with a bolt going through it so you couldn't really put uh, any other kind of spacer up other than the round piece at the top so with Chevy you can put a round piece at the top and a piece of flat on the bottom to raise it up even higher so that is uh, what I got so now that you know everything let's go check it out and start working on this thing all right so Few bolts. That's the spacers that go on the bottom of this trot. And I'm not sure what this is yet. Instructions. And oh, I think these are the. Uh, angled pieces that you put in with your block so it doesn't like do something weird to how your leaf springs are sitting on your um, axle. So, yep, see how they're angled? them in with your uh, rear blocks, Ooh, stickers, Are some spacers for something I imagine. Then here's the bottom spacer. It's really hot in here. And that's something else. It's really hot outside and I'm doing this outside. I have the room to uh, do it in my shop, but I don't have the time to do it and let it sit there like it's gonna sit here because I'm probably only gonna be able to do uh, the front of this and then hopefully tomorrow do the back and I can't have, uh, I can't have my truck sitting in the way in my shop two days okay and here's the uh, rear blocks I think these are gonna go on there like that set in place there's the other rear block These are going to be the uh, these are going to be the top strut spacer. So these are the top strut spacers. So um, you're going to take your strut off, and the uh, it's got three studs on the top of your strut that mounts the top to the truck, and you're going to sit this on top of them tighten the nut down on this on your strut and then we're gonna have uh, bolts that come up from the bottom that will be able to remount the top of the strut back to the truck that way that's how these work and I did do a uh, strut spacer kit I think it was three inches on uh, the 2010 Ford that I had so I've, I'm familiar with these uh, but I've never done a uh, rear lift kit all right so this is all of the pieces so let's go ahead and take the uh we're gonna just do one wheel at a time take the wheel off get the strut out put the spacers in place put the strut back in and then put the wheel back in. And that's it and then we're gonna move to the other side 
And then that's probably all I'm gonna do today. And then tomorrow I'm gonna come back and do the rear part of the lift kit. So let's go ahead and get into this. All right, got this thing jacked up, got the skid plates, got her one ear off, got the first wheel off, and now we're gonna disconnect some of this stuff. That is the strut, we're gonna pull that off, put the top spacer on, and then put it back in here, and put the bottom spacer under it there. All right, so got all of this loose, everything that needs to come loose, and now I'm actually working on the strut, and it's got three uh, nuts at the top, and I found out after I did all this, before you even jack it up, that you need to go to a nut over here on top of the strut that you can't get to from the bottom. And the driver's side is not like this, so this is the only one. That one right there. Ow, that's hot. There's a nut right there. You have to take that off from right here. Now, these this that's electrical wires that was connected to that stud with this thing and i couldn't get it off i ended up cutting this to get the wires out of the way and then i was able to just get around it like it was on there like this get around it and was able to wiggle it off so now i can take that nut off and then come back down here Take those two nuts off and the whole strut assembly should come out. We can put our spacers on and start putting the side back together. Put my socket and some long extensions together and was able to get it off. Now let's get these two out and we can take the strut out. Pull the strut out of here. Got it in here. And this is the strut. We're gonna go ahead and pop one of these up top. And we can put this thing back in here and put our other spacer on the bottom when we go to reinstall it. Then we can put everything back together and move to the next side. Oh, and all the videos you see of people uh, doing this, it's like a five minute video and it seems like it took them five minutes. It didn't take five minutes. A lot of this stuff is a real big pain in the butt, but it is doable. It's nothing real hard. Just have some patience and be tough. Yeah, and now I've gotten to the point where I'm going to have to get my wife to take me back to the shop because my truck is taken apart right now. And I found out that when you put the uh, strut spacers on the top, on the struts, the brand that I got, when you put that on there, you have to cut off part of the studs that are already on the uh, strut because so it'll give it a flat surface when you put it back up in there. So I got to get a ride to the shop and go get one of the grinders that are over there and probably bring another truck back because I'm not going to finish this today. So I'm going to need a ride to work in the morning. So I'm going to run to the shop and get that, cut these studs off, put the spacer spacers on and probably go ahead to the uh, other side. All right. So just got done to the shop and getting ready to leave and go back home to work on the truck more, got the uh, angle grinder I needed so we can cut those uh, the tops of the studs off and then uh, put it all back together. Hopefully I can get the uh, front done. And once the front is done, uh, before we go to the rear for the rear blocks, I think we're going to the uh, other small spacers or for the differential, I think, that we're gonna have to once we get the struts all done and sat back down, we're gonna have to put the jack up under the differential. And uh, I think that's what it is. I might be saying that wrong. And, uh, and then we're going to uh, jack that up or take, the, uh, take it off wherever it is and jack it up and then put these spacers in and then bolt it back down. 
and then we can move on to the back. So right now let's go ahead and get the front done. Okay, so we're going to take uh, this angle grinder and just cut the tips of these studs off. So when we put All right, so take two. So we're going to take the angle grinder and cut just the tops of the studs off. So when we put the strut spacer on there, there's nothing sticking above the top of the spacer. So it'll have a clean fit when we put it back on. have no power. I'm in trouble with that, but I got it to work and totally forgot to film afterwards. Uh, but here, see, I just ground some off the top. So when we put that guy on, it'll be flush at the top. So let's go ahead and get this up in here and get it uh, put together. All right. So now we're going to take these off and put the uh, spacer on here. And we're not going to use these anymore. So this is going to go on. Come on now. Oh, for God's sake. See, this is why I enjoy doing projects not filming because it's a huge pain in the butt. But you know what? I keep on because I love you guys. Why aren't you going on? Wait, I put it in the wrong hole, stupid. I put it in the same holes again. There we go. Finally got it on. Good lord. Alright, so now that we've gotten that far, uh, they've supplied nuts. We're going to put these on here. And I don't know what size these are. Not that size. fit in there. Jeez. Uh. See, that's what I mean. Stuff like doing this, you just find, or well, maybe it's just me. Maybe it only happens to me and everybody else is a breeze. But anytime I do anything like this, it's just problem after problem after problem. You know, sometime this year, I mean, we haven't had a great year, but sometime this year, I'm hoping that uh, I'll actually get this thing done.
what's going on. No, it's just that long. Ago. And now, so the stud is too long. The end of the stud is hitting in here and can't reach the nut anymore. Oh, geez. Looks like I have to go back to the shop and find a deep well socket that'll fit. All right, so we're back, going back to the shop again. I, this is the third time I've been here today to see if we can find a 18 millimeter deep well socket. And you know, I didn't think about it until now. I should have just brought the freaking thing with me. And now I did. So I'm gonna go, hopefully we have, I'm not 100% positive we have one, but if we do, I'm gonna go ahead and get the whole set of deep wall sockets and I'll bring it home and they probably won't fit either. So I don't know, this video might end up being like three hours long by the time I get done with it because I can't even get one side of the front lift kit done. I mean, I got off at 3.30 today, went home and started and it's seven o'clock right now. And I haven't even put started putting it back together. So we're gonna see what uh, what else goes wrong, and uh, see if we can get some sockets that work, and hopefully just put this one side of the front back together. Just get the one side back together, and I'll be happy. And then tomorrow I'll do the other side of the front. And then, what is it, tomorrow's Thursday, the day after that will be Friday. Hopefully I can get the uh, those other little spacers in. And hopefully the back. And since it's Friday, I gotta wake up and go install some uh, vent thing and do a backsplash in somebody's house. So, I don't know. Might end up staying up Friday until I get the rest of the thing done. I don't know. So I'm getting ready to walk back into the shop and see what stuff we've got and go back home and hopefully get this side put back together. We'll see. Well, I'm surprised we actually had what I needed. So, now that that's, this uh, day's gone. It hasn't even just been the lift yet. This whole day today has been just like, an unnecessary amount of stupidity and crap. So I was really surprised to find that we actually had what I needed. So now we're on the way back to the house and hopefully I don't have to come here again until in the morning to go back to work. <sighs> All right, so it is a new day. Let's see if I can set this up here. It is a uh, new day. I got uh, too irritated yesterday with putting this lift kit on. And after all that work, it seems like it doesn't work. I don't know. but So it's first thing the next morning. And my truck is apart. And I ended up taking off of work. These, by the way, are very, very good. Espresso Mocha ready to drink coffee by Black Rifle Company. Black Rifle Coffee Company. But anyway, uh, I tried, I'm still on the same side of the truck I was, the passenger side front, and I uh, did everything and got the front strut spacer on, didn't have an issue with that, and when you put the strut spacer on, you mount the spacer onto the studs that were the mounting studs for the truck to put it on the truck. So when you do that, you're taking those studs away because they're used to mount the uh, spacer. So they put three new holes in the spacer. 
So since you can't use the old studs and they put three new holes for you to mount it back after you put the spacer on, you have to take the whole strut and spin it 180 degrees to get the holes to line up and you can't avoid that. It, the spacer goes on one way and the studs are taken up that were the studs and they gave you three new holes to put uh, screws and bolts down in once you get the spacer on there. So you can't avoid that. You have to turn it 180 degrees to get it to line up. Well, on the bottom of the strut uh, with Ford, it wasn't that big deal because it just had a hole at the bottom that a bolt went through in the control arm. So with Chevy, they have the two tabs out with a bolt here and a bolt here to mount. Well, those tabs are angled like this. So when you put it on the truck, the control arms, this going kind of angled like this and the tabs on the strut are angled like this. So when you turn it 180 degrees, it's the other way. So now when I put this back on last night, my control arms like this, but the tabs on the uh, strut is like this. And I had to put a spacer in here and a bolt through there and it won't line up. So I've given up, I'm uh, doing away with the hopes of putting a lift kit on here. I might still do one one day later in the future, I don't know. But as of right now, I don't see how this can work. I mean, it would, uh, if you took the top spacer off and didn't use that, you'd still have the studs to mount it to the truck and the tabs on the bottom would line up like they normally do and you could put a spacer in that way. But when you put a spacer on the top and you have to turn it 180 degrees, I don't see how that's how that works. So, uh, and I have seen some kits that you actually have to take the whole strut assembly apart and put like new studs and a spacer in that way and that would work, but you'd have to have some kind of compression tool of some kind to compress the whole strut to be able to take it apart and I don't have one and a lot of normal people wouldn't have one so that would probably be out of the question for a do-it-yourself thing so uh, I'm gonna get the spacer off of this strut and put this truck back together so this uh, kind of irritated I really wanted that lift kit on there but oh well I'm sure I'll have other projects in the future so Let's get this truck back together. So before I take this apart and put it all back together, I wanted to show you guys this. So here are the studs that originally mounted this thing. So when you put the spacer on here, put the spacer on here, these are used to mount the spacer to the strut. Then you have these three holes to put this thing back so this thing went in the truck like this those three holes these three holes line up this way and on the bottom see how they're twisted to line up so when you put this strut back on you have to turn it this way so these three holes line up in this triangle like this did 180 degrees and then when you put it in that way they're bent the other way and they have to sit on that control arm and I don't see how that can work so I'm gonna go ahead and take this off put this whole thing back together and get on with my life all right, so I got all of this back together. Everything's how it should be. And now I'm ready to put the wheel back on and I gotta put some of the uh, skid plates or guards, whatever you wanna call them back on. And then this thing is done. Well, not done, but back to normal. And now when I get all that crap done, now I gotta go back to work and carry on with my normal life with without a lifted truck, but whatever, so. Let's get back into the day. All right, so we got the truck back together as a minute, which uh, 
I will would like to do some kind of lift sometime in the future, but not now. And hopefully I can uh, return the lift kit I got and I'll uh, get my money back, I hope. And uh, so, yeah, this has been a, a wonder, wonderful video of a complete failure of two days. So, that's great. Um, so, yeah, I, I might do another video on a lift kit in the future. Probably. I uh, definitely don't know when. But uh, that, that could be coming down the line at some point. And, uh, yeah, so I've got to get on back to work. Oh, which really sucks since I've had two days of pretty much getting absolutely nothing done. Alright, so I'll see you guys in the next one.